From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, welcome to Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer, and with me in the studio is my good friend Roger Charlton. Hi. Hello, Peter. To tell you the truth, Roger, I haven't prepared a great deal. This is the beginning of term, but... Yeah. Um, on the phone, you said you were sitting on something. That's right. Yeah, something's been bothering me for a while. Has it? Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't really anticipate when we started doing these podcasts that people who are native speakers of English living in an English-speaking country would listen to this. And yet, in the meantime, we have subscribers in the UK and in the US. Isn't that and great? And possibly elsewhere. <laughs> but that's not the bad thing. No, so, no, so no, no. What are you angry about? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they are mostly interested in how we deal with cultural matters, especially comparisons. Right. And uh, that's something we'll come back to another time, I'm sure. Now, what was bothering me was uh, some time ago when we were talking about sports, and specifically football, we mentioned how the word football would be interpreted in different ways in different countries. Right. Especially in the U.S., there's only one kind of football, and that's the grid game that people in the U.K. are gradually getting to know, but mm -hmm. it's not a British sport. What we call American football yeah, in yeah. Germany. <laughs> then there's Australian rules football, mm -hmm. whereas in the U.K., it is, um, well, it's officially called association football. And I kept using the word soccer. Right. And people in Britain picked me up on this and said, we don't do that anymore. This is just kind of old fashioned, um, not current English. And that's not true? Not really. But just to explain, when I used the word soccer in, in that podcast, that was to avoid ambiguity, because as we've seen, the word football is ambiguous. Of course. And I just wanted to make clear when I mentioned soccer, I mean the British game, well, the game that's British in origin, as we mentioned, there have been rules for this game since the 19th century in Britain, so it's well established. So I checked and double-checked this word soccer. And one of the good sources of information is the Oxford English Dictionary. Of course. Which reliably gives the first use in writing of all new words. Okay. Or even phrases. Okay. So what do they give under soccer? And the really interesting thing, which was new to me, I must say, you look under S-O-C-C-E-R, it points you directly to S-O-C-K-E-R. Uh-huh. And I thought, what? C okay, C-K is a very common pair of letters when we write English words. And C-C is extremely unusual. Yes. In fact, the O-E-D only lists antiquated words or antiquated spellings for other things with S-O-C-C. -C. Oh, the word soccer with a double C is almost unique in English in uh -huh. terms of spelling. Right, so right. These, Come to think of know. it, there are not, no, so they count. I have no explanation for why C-K became C-C here. Okay. And I haven't found an explanation. There's a challenge for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the word is used in Great Britain? It is. Uh, let me just say about the origin, because this is part of it. Apparently, soccer, with a CK, was an abbreviation of the word association, oh. as in association football. Okay. And there is a kind of parallel, because the other British kind of football is rugby football. Right. Nobody says rugby football anymore. They used to say rugger. And a, among certain groups of people in Britain, you may still come across that word. Okay. So we have soccer and rugger both of which are now not really very current. Mm -hmm. With the word soccer, if you check news media, those based in Britain, mm -hmm. you'll find they almost exclusively use soccer instead of football. Why? Because all of these things are now world sports, American football, association football, and so on. Mm -hmm. So news media also want to make sure their language is not ambiguous. Just as I was doing in our podcast. Okay. Did you tell your friends in Great Britain that they were wrong and that no, actually... No. <laughs> no, I was a little bit more um, actually like, polite than that. But I did, I did say, check the news media. For example, check the website of one of the biggest football clubs in the UK, which has fans around the world, Manchester United. Mm -hmm. You can go to manunited.com. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And you can see that they use the word soccer uh -huh. on their website. Well, when if they use it, I guess, then then the word has has the blessing. <laughs> well, of course, th this is a huge commercial interest. Of course. Manunited.com, this is a company, and it is very, very valuable as a company. Mm -hmm. So they have to be careful how they present themselves. Okay. So we can learn two things here, can't we? First of all, you can use the term soccer and not sound American. Yeah. <laughs> and the second thing would be don't always trust a native speaker when you ask them a question about well, their own vocabulary. I'm a native speaker too. So okay. okay. Yeah, but you're special. You check oh, thank on things. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when we have time, we check. But uh, of course, I've also made many mistakes over the years. Right. Um, well, Case in point, mm -hmm. I mean, we all make mistakes yeah. and we all have misconceptions yeah. about our own language. And I think, um, I always say to my students, mistakes are learning opportunities. I think we'll end it on that word. Okay. <laughs> Hear you next week, folks. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.